Good morning, I'm Pastor Roy, and this is Grove Kids Children's Church. I'm so glad you're with me today. Today is our last lesson on the series on mercy. We've been studying for the past several weeks about what mercy is. Do you remember what we said it was? It's undeserved forgiveness for a punishment that we deserve. So undeserved forgiveness is mercy. How do we get that? Well, it's a free gift of God. God gives us mercy. And He wants us to share mercy with each other. Let's check out our memory verse. Our memory verse this month has been Psalm 86, 15. And it says, But you, O Lord, are a God of compassion and mercy. You're slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. Psalm 86, 15. That verse tells us absolutely everything we need to know about who and what God is all about. He's, he's all about being faithful to us. He's all about showing us His compassion, unfailing love, but most of all, His mercy. His mercies are new every day for us, and they're never ending. They keep on and on. His mercy will never run out. Kind of like a drop of water in the ocean. How many drops of water do you think are in the ocean? Man, I don't think you could count that. That would be so crazy. High of a number, you can't even imagine it. And just think, God's love is even more than that. His, his compassion and His mercy are more than that. His unfailing love goes on forever. So remember Psalm 86, 15. Put it in your heart and trust in who and what God is. He's the same yesterday, today, and will be the same tomorrow and the next day and the next day and forever. And that sameness is His love, His mercy, His compassion, and His faithfulness. All right, I have my friend Henry. He's in the suitcase. He's going to come out and he's going to share one of the first, the first of the, the two Bible characters we're going to talk about today. So hang on just a minute. And let me get Henry out. Hey, Henry, you ready to come out? Oh, sure I am. All right, well, come on. Woohoo! Hey, the kids are still not here. No, the kids are still not here. We're still stuck uh, at home, not getting to come to Children's Church. Uh, instead, we're having to watch it on our TVs and on our computers and stuff like that. But uh, anyway, man, you look at your hair. Your hair is a mess. Yeah, I got deadhead. All right, bedhead. Well, let me straighten it up there for you. All right. Well, Henry, I brought you out today. Yeah. All right. We're going we're gonna to tell a story. What are we going to tell? Well, I want to tell the story of a father. You're a father? Congratulations. No, not, not I'm a father. So we're going to talk about a father in the Bible. And uh, he had two sons. Oh, we told this story. Jacob and Esau. No, no, no. This is not Jacob and Esau. This is another father. This father had two sons. And the Bible tells us that one of these sons didn't want to live at home anymore. So he packed up his bags and he ran away and joined the circus. No, he didn't join the circus. The Bi he ran away, though. No, no, no. The Bible tells us, in this story, it tells us that that son went to his father and he told his father that he wanted to move on. And his father said, you're a spoiled brat, get back to work. No, his father didn't say that. Go clean your room. No, his room's dirty. I don't know that his room is dirty. Anyway, he went to his father and he said, Father, I know that one day you will pass on and I will receive my inheritance. What's that? Well, an inheritance is, is, is when, we, when uh, our parents pass away and, and we're really sad and we cry a lot. Oh, yes, yes, that's, that's going to happen. But what it is, is is when we receive all the stuff, all the things that they own now become ours. Like shoes that don't fit. Well, maybe like shoes that don't fit. But more importantly for our story, it was the, the, the riches that the father owned. You see, in this story, the father owns uh, great amounts of land and, and many cattle and he's got servants. Oh, he was rich. Yeah, he was rich. The Bible says that he was a very wealthy man. And that his son came to him asking for this inheritance ahead of time. Oh, he's going to off his daddy. Do what? He's going to kill his dad, man. This is a murder mystery. 
No, it's not a murder mystery. He didn't kill him. No, 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 no. His father, even though this had saddened the father, his father said, okay, his father's crazy. <laughs> Stop it. Uh, his father agreed. He said, okay, son, here's your inheritance. And the son took the inheritance and he went to a far off land, Disneyland. No, not Disneyland, Legoland. No, not Legoland. It says that he went to a far off land and there he wasted his money. Oh, he went to Vegas. No, he didn't go to Vegas. Anyway, he went to this far off land with the money that his father gave him. And it says that he spent that on riotous living. What is that? Well, it's kind of like he, he threw parties all the time and he spent his money freely and he didn't use it like he should have. He threw parties? Yes. I like parties. Birthday parties? Well, I don't know that it was just birthday parties. It was all kinds of parties. And because he was always throwing parties and he was free with his money, he had lots of friends. Like on Facebook? Well, no, no. These were real life friends. Not just social media? No, not just social media. These were real life friends and they would come around all the time because he had all kinds of money. That's right, because he had all this money and he was free with this money and he, he would buy things and, and spend on, on big parties and, and clothes and food and it was great. Everybody was his friend. Yeah, it's easy to get friends when you got money. Well, it's easy to get people that say they're your friends because this story tells us that all of his friends didn't stick around. They didn't? No. You see, the money began to run out. And when the money ran out, the friends ran out. That's right. When the money ran out, the friends ran out. And uh, he no longer had money to spend on things like parties. He didn't even have money to spend on por in important things like basketball shoes. Yes, like basketball shoes. He couldn't buy new basketball shoes, but that's not really that important. New video games. No, not new video games. Uh, he didn't even have money to spend on the important things like food. No way. That's right. He, he began to run out of food and he began to get hungry. You see, the, it tells us that there was a famine during that time and, and the, there was a food shortage. And because of that, um, he didn't have any money and he couldn't buy any foods. So he had to go get a job. He got a job at McDonald's. No, yeah, he got a job at McDonald's selling dig knacks and fries and jumbo shakes. No, 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 no. It says that he got a job feeding pigs. Oh, the same thing. Pigs eat it. No, not stop it. Um, he got a job eating, feeding pigs. Eating pigs, not eating pigs, feeding pigs. Oh, what did he feed them? Well, pigs eat slop. They eat spoiled uh, fruits and vegetables and stuff like, you know, scraps and stuff. And it stinks and there's flies all around and, and the smelly mud and the nasty pigs. And uh, it says that he was feeding those pigs. Man, that's gross. It was gross. And uh, he was so hungry that he looked at the food that the pigs were eating. And he went, man, that looks good. Oh, don't tell me he ate it. Well, it says that it looked so good to him and he was so hungry. But then he came to himself. Oh, good. I thought he lost his mind. Well, it says that he came to himself and he thought, man, I'll go home. He can't do that. Why not? He can't do that. His dad will get mad at him. No, his dad's mad at him because he ran away. No, his dad's not mad at him because he ran away. Because he wasted all the money. And if he goes home, he'll get, he'll get in trouble. No, he won't get in trouble. He'll get grounded. No, no, he'll get a whipping. No, he won't get a whipping. Listen, it tells us that he thought about going home and then he thought about what he had done and how wrong he had been and the bad attitude that he had. But then he thought about his father's servants and he thought, man, I'll go home and ask dad for a job. I'll become one of dad's servants because even the servants on my dad's farm even they are better off than I am in this pig pen. So it says that he got up and he headed home. And when he got close to home, his father saw him afar off. And he called the fire department. What? You said he was on far. No, far, far, far away. Oh, I thought you meant far, like he's on fire. No, 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 no. Not a fire. That's what I said, far. No, fire. Uh, he was 
far away. Fire away! No. Shoot him with your guns! Fire away! No, 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 stop. So his father saw him way off, and his father came running after him. And he got up to him, and he smelled him, and he saw, he, 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 call, he called the cops. No, he didn't call the cops. He got close to him, and he called, he called the National Guard. No, he got close to him, and he called, he called the Marines. No, stop. He got close to him, and as he came, he threw his arms open wide and called for the servants. What did he call them for? Well, he called the servants and he said, get my son a new robe. Get him some new sandals because the ones he's wearing are nasty. No, uh, they were worn out. But, but he, his father got him new clothes and got him new sandals. And his father said, hey, let's throw a feast. Let's prepare a great feast because my son who was dead and gone is alive again. Wait, you didn't say he was dead. Well, his father considered him dead because he had ran away and he was no longer there. He had lost his son and he would look for him every day. He would go out and look for him. And to him, it felt as if he had lost his son to death. He thought it was that permanent. But now his son had come home and he's excited. He is. Yeah, he's so excited that he throws a great big feast. And instead of being mad at him for the bad attitude, being mad at him for wasting all the money, Instead, he threw a great party for him. You see, his son deserved a punishment. His son deserved uh, being maybe put in time out or what, and getting a whipping. No, he didn't get a whipping. Stop it with that. You gonna whip me? Help, help, he's gonna, no, I'm not a cop, calm down. He, he deserved a punishment. That's right, he was a stinking brat. All right, now stop it, he wasn't. He had just made mad, bad mistakes like you and me. We make bad mistakes. No, I make good mistakes. All right, now stop. His father may have had a right to be upset. His father, who loved him, gave him this money and he went and wasted it. But he came back and his father showed him love and compassion and mercy, just like our Father in Heaven wants to show us. Matter of fact, the Bible tells us that, that when one of us comes to the Father and we ask him for forgiveness, he strikes us with lightning. No, he doesn't strike us with lightning. Instead, he throws a great party and he shows us love and mercy and he's always compassionate with us. His love is unfailing and so is his mercy. His mercy is new every day. Every day. Yes, every day. Wow, that's cool. It is cool. Um, I'm going to put you back in suitcase because I'm going to read a story out of the Bible. And uh, we're going to see what else we can do. All right, see you later, alligator. All right, get in the suitcase. There we go. See you at the lake, Jake. All right, get back in the suitcase. Get in there. You know, boys and girls, God is so great. And his mercies never end. He's always compassionate. And he always has love for each one of us. Speaking of love, I've got story that I want to tell you that shows the kind of love that we should show each other. It's a story of David and Jonathan. Do you remember David and Jonathan? Remember David and, and how he killed the giant? And King Saul, how King Saul chased David and was angry with David all the time because God decided to put David in place of Saul as king? Well, tell you what, Watch this little video and it'll give you a recap of the whole Jonathan and David story. And then we're gonna read our story out of the Bible. This is David. Maybe you've heard about him before. As a kid, he killed a giant named Goliath and he ruled Israel as a king for more than 40 years. This is Jonathan. Jonathan was the son of King Saul who also ruled Israel for a while. And Jonathan and David were best friends. Now, here's where it gets tricky. When David killed Goliath, Jonathan's father, Saul, was king. And at first, everyone was really happy that David had won. He even became pretty famous. But King Saul started to get really jealous. He was worried that David would end up taking his spot as king. The strange thing is, Jonathan should have probably been the one to be jealous. After all, since his father was king, he would have been the next one in line for the throne. But instead of being jealous or bitter towards David, Jonathan kept being a great friend. In fact, there were a few times when King Saul tried to hurt and even kill David. But every time, Jonathan protected his friend, even when it might have been dangerous. David was able to rely on Jonathan, and they were friends for a long time. The Bible says that Jonathan loved David as he loved himself. That's what Jesus tells us to do, too. And that's just a little bit about David and Jonathan. Wow, what a story. 
And it, what a great friendship David and Jonathan had. They were close friends. Do you have a close friend? I hope you do. And the Bible tells us that Jesus himself sticks closer than a brother. He's our, he can be our bestest, best friend. And he wants to hear from us daily. Now, I want to read some more about David. This is after David becomes king. Saul and Jonathan uh, are killed in a battle. And afterwards, David becomes king. Here's what happened after that. It says in 2 Samuel chapter 9, starting in verse 1. It says, One day th David thought, I wonder if any of Saul's family are still alive. If they are, I'll be kind to them because I made a promise to Jonathan. David called in Zibia, one of the servants of Saul's family. David said, so you're Zibia. Yes, your majesty, I am. David asked, are any of Saul's family still alive? If they are, I want to be kind to them. Zibia answered, one of Jonathan's son is still alive, but he can't walk. Where is he? David asked. Zibia replied, he lives in Lodabar with Machor, the son of Amiel. David sent some of his servants to bring Jonathan's son from Lodabar. Uh, his name was Mephibosheth. Wow, what a hard name to say. Can you say Mephibosheth? Uh, he was the grandson of Saul. He came to David and knelt down. David said, are you Mephibosheth? Yes, I am, your majesty. David said, don't be afraid. I'll be kind to you because Jonathan was your father. I'm going to give you back the land that belonged to your grandfather Saul. Besides that, I will always, you will always eat with me at my table. Mephibosheth knelt down again and said, why should you care about me? I'm worth no more than a dead dog. David called in, Zibia, uh, called in Zibia, Saul's chief servant, and told him, Since Mephibosheth's, Mephibosheth is Saul's grandson, I'm giving him back everything that belonged to your master Saul and his family. You and your 15 sons and 20 servants will work for Mephibosheth. You will farm his land and bring in his crops. So Saul's family and servants will have food but Mephibosheth will always eat at my table. Zibia replied, Your Majesty, I will do exactly what you tell me to do. So Zibia's family and servants worked for Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth was lame, but he lived in Jerusalem and ate at David's table, just like one of David's own sons. Back then, a king, when he came into power, had the right, because he was king, to do pretty much anything he wanted to do. But one of the things that a king would do is he would slaughter all the living uh, descendants of the former king. Because the king didn't want any of them to have a right to the throne. So the king would come in, uh, the old king would be, be dethroned, and they would kill everybody that was related to him. So when Zibia comes in and he hears that Saul, or that David wants to find Saul's family, I'm sure the first thing that went through Th Zibia's mind was, okay, here we go. David's going to kill everybody. But instead, what did David do? David showed mercy, didn't he? He showed kindness. It was David's right to do the, the other thing, getting rid of everybody. But instead, David showed kindness. He showed mercy. And he brought Mephibosheth in. And even though Mephibosheth was crippled and he couldn't walk and he couldn't do anything, David took care of him. David made sure that he got all the lands back. He made sure that he had all of the servants needed to take care of the land and farm the land and provide plenty of food. And he also said, you'll eat at my table, at the king's table. You'll be treated like royalty for the rest of your life. You see, God's just like that. God's like the father to the, to the prodigal son, the first story that, that Henry helped me tell. And he's just like David in the second story. God is there looking for you and me. He's looking out for you and me to come to him and he wants to give us kindness and mercy. He wants to show us forgiveness 
even though we've messed up and we've fallen short of God's glory, remember going to the carnival or the fair and seeing a ride that had a sign that said, you must be this tall? And maybe you didn't measure all the way up to get on that ride? The Bible tells us that each one of us, because of the sin in our life, because of the things we've done that have not been what God wanted, because of the things that we've done, we fall short. We don't measure up to where we need to be with God's expectation of God's holiness and God's glory. So God says, that's okay. I sent Jesus and Jesus paid the price for you and he measures up. You don't have to. When I see you, I see the fact that he measures up and because he measures up, I show you mercy. That's what mercy is. And we've learned this week all about how God shows us mercy and because of His love and His mercy, we need to share that same love and mercy with everybody around us. When we do, we're doing exactly what God has called us each to do. Well, that's today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you had fun. I hope you learned a little something. Check out the downloads and we'll see you next week right here at Grove Kids Children's Church.